This happened when my fiance Morgan and I just moved into our house together in a quiet little town. We still live in this house. It's a modest, cute little house perfect for us and a couple of kids if and when we decide to have. We met one of the neighbors right off the bat. They seemed nice, they were an older couple in their late 60s. The neighbors on the other side were pretty far away, so we didn't meet them for a while. We were still in the unpacking and furnishing phase. It might have been week two of living in the house. We were exhausted by every night, having to work our jobs and then also setting up the house and unloading. Morgan was cooking pasta in the kitchen. I was sitting at the table talking to her while on my laptop shopping for area rugs. It was a little stuffy in the house, so I was going to go slide open the back door. But as I got to it, I looked into the backyard and noticed someone sitting in one of the chairs. He was kind of hunched over with his head down. When I say I almost shit myself when I saw it, I'm not kidding. I whispered Morgan's name and said, don't scream, but there's a man in the yard. She walked over to look outside and gasped. She grabbed me and kind of hid behind me and said, go say something. No wait, don't. Truth be told, I myself didn't know if I should go out there or not. I'm not the biggest man to be honest, and even though this guy had his back to us and was sitting down, he looked like he was bigger than me. Morgan suggested I knock on the glass and yell at him to leave. I didn't want to do it though, I was scared. The backyard is huge, but right outside the backyard door is a patio with the leftover furniture. The lights in the yard weren't on. We just saw him through the interior lights shining through the glass door, which meant he had to know we were in here. I said fuck it, knocked on the glass and yelled, hey you need to get off our property. The man turned around and looked at me. He then got up with this half smile, almost like he was laughing. He looked 50. He had a really long gray beard and tattoos down to his wrists. He walked up to the glass. I made sure the door was locked. He stood on the other side of the glass door and shifted his gaze to Morgan. He started licking his lips and saying vile shit. I yelled, all right, I'm calling the police. I closed the sliding blind to get him out of our faces. I called 911 and told the operator to please hurry and send police to our house. I could still hear the man on the other side of the door, now speaking at a very high volume, almost yelling, still saying disgusting things about Morgan. I put the phone to the glass so the operator could hear it. He made me stay on the phone until police would show up. Eventually it went quiet outside, and so I took a peek out the glass and the guy was gone. Still, I couldn't wait for police to arrive, and when they did, they searched the backyard, took a police report, and left. We thought it was over, but later on that night when we were in the living room watching TV, we both agreed we heard something from outside in the yard. I went over to the window and kinked the blind, just enough to see that man outside again. He had a cigarette in his hand. He was talking to himself, or trying to talk to us, facing the house. He noticed the kink in the blinds, because he ran over to the window. I jumped back, and he started pounding on the window, saying all these awful, sick things he wanted to do to Morgan. I told her to go upstairs, I didn't want her to hear this anymore. I yelled I'm gonna call the police again, and then the pounding stopped, and he went silent. I waited a few seconds before kinking the blind again, and he was gone. I went upstairs to go comfort Morgan, who was visibly shaken. I told her he was gone, when in hindsight I should have called the cops again. Downstairs, I heard bumping and knocking. I went halfway down the stairs, and heard bumps on the back door, and the doorknob twisting and turning. He was trying to get into the house. I grabbed the phone in the kitchen and called 911 again, once again begging the operator to send police now. This time, the police arrived a lot quicker, and I didn't alert the man outside that they were coming. But unfortunately, by the time they showed up, that man disappeared again. It's very likely he just ran off into the trees deep in the backyard. He didn't come back again that night. The next day, we went around knocking on neighbors' doors, both introducing ourselves to those we hadn't met yet and asking them if they knew anyone matching the description of that man. What we found out was disturbing. A couple a few doors down from us knew that man, he was known for beating his ex-wife and having a drinking and drug problem, and generally just regarded as very dangerous. He lived around the block from us in a small, rundown house, that's the scariest part. We reported him to the police, but since we didn't have him on video, we couldn't press charges. We don't know if he still lives there because we haven't heard from or seen him in a long time. I hope it stays that way.